Mute. You're so pretty. Yes.
So I used to do this. Can you get that up here? I'm going to get this right here. So, just jumping on for a little bit. Sir, ouch. I pick it and don't come. thing to do, don't you think? All right, we are talking about, we are talking about the Nijing too. We are talking about the Nijing too. Going live on Facebook to discuss the bean. Cause we are beans in a scene. And other things, turn on do not disturb. Let me just uh, get my stream happening here on Facebook. All right. Hello. Hi. Check it out. Look. Here I am. Let us discuss the Nijing 2. This is a cup of tea with Katie Z. If you know me um, and uh, you were around at the beginning of the pandemic, I was doing a like daily cup of tea with Katie Z and then the cancer got in the way. And so we're back to it. And I want to introduce you to the coolest chart ever in the history of information architecture ever that I had nothing to do with, sadly. This is a chart that your um, acupuncturist probably has in their office. It's called the Nijing 2. It was discovered in China, in Beijing. This is a relatively recent artifact too. I think this was only identified 
my cats are having a meltdown. I think it was only identified like the 19th century. So one audience is seeing the Nijing Two without any writing on it. And other audiences, you're seeing the Nijing Two with the Chinese on it. I'm only going to be speaking to the what's in the Nijing Two, though. Okay. This is such a fractal. I have two different images of this in two different screens facing two different ways. And all of the gestures of my hands are accurate to both of these that I can see. That's how amazing this is as a somatic tool, because what it does, this brings us into the body from the side. It brings us into the body through the coronal axis. So see, because we live in, in we live in dimension, okay? Not on an operating table, all of the scientists talking about nervous system regulation. Here is the human you are likely to see also at your Chinese medicine doctor. Oh, and I should say the classes are like rolling around on the floor and having fun. This is the, this is like the concepts, right? So remember, I'm saying that we're going into the body sideways with this chart. This is the coronal axis. In your brain, it is shown, it's displayed in the Nijing 2 at the top with this um, range of mountains at the top, the mountain of the nine peaks uh, that also can be read as your homunculus. But as it relates to the corona of your brain, not your mind, your brain, okay? When we go into the body sideways, and when I say we go into the body, I mean, how am I being brought in? If I go in sideways, then I'm facing the correct direction to you, to your corona. Something that happens in our brains at this, this is the sagittal axis of the body, the sagittal plane of the brain. This is displayed in the Nijing too through the lips. Okay, we can see that through here. Thank you for the likes and everything. Please make me more exciting online. <laughs> I have to figure out where my uh, paying customers are because they're not in my city. Um, so please help me. Help me discover where my best home is online. Okay, so here's your sagittal axis of the body. This is also the corpus callosum of your brain. When, I think this is mostly with vision, but it absolutely happens with thought as well. There's a split at the, at the corpus callosum when things, when we perceive something, right? I don't know if you remember that from biology, but we perceive something, it gets flipped. Western medicine, we are learning about a really cool chart from Chinese medicine. It's called the Nijing Two. I actually have to get in the middle of these. I'm streaming in a couple of places. And I'm telling you why I think it's like an amazing tool, especially for neurodivergence and trauma. Um, and then if you go to my website, you can download free copies of it too. I'm going to make that even easier soon. So this corona, this sagittal axis, okay? That's our, there's your lips in the Nijing too. We also have a transverse axis and a transverse plane in the brain. This is, in this system, okay? And the, the system is all of China, <laughs> all of 
esoteric Chinese philosophy. The practice is Nadan. It's spelled N-E-I-D-A-N. Nadan is inner alchemy. So there's also Weidan, which is external alchemy. And that involves like potions and mixtures and like all kinds of things. Inner alchemy involves becoming a conductor of your own power. To conduct your own power. We do that with the weaver. So you can see her under the star bridge. She's holding a, a needle. So if you think about Chinese medicine and how in TCM, when you go to the acupuncturist, they're using needles. Internally, in inner alchemy, as we're learning how to conduct our own power to the best of our ability, by the way, the more you look like me, the more that means doing what I'm doing right now, sitting down. Um, and the, the weaver is the conductor. So oh, there's another comment. Have I heard of the book, The Web That Has No Weaver? Thank you for asking. I was hoping somebody would bring it up. Um, I don't read that. I have many, many alchemical TCM acupuncture texts that speak to Shen. That's what the web that has no weaver is about. It's about an entity or a set of entities in Chinese medicine called Shen, S-H-E-N, Shen. You have a Shen for the whole totality of you that resides in your head. And so for folks who have a connection to soul, you might contemplate Shen as the idea of soul. And then however you understand and experience it is going to be how you make it yours. This is always like, I have always found this so funny with the concept of black and white thinking. This is my black and white thinking. My black and white thinking is machine learning, deep neural networks, deep learning. Humans, 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 humans. Anyway, <laughs> so um, the weaver, Shen in Chinese medicine, do the labor. And I make a bunch of art about them because they're kind of confusing. Here we go. This one, um, this copy got, it got waterboarded yesterday. <clears throat> but as an example, in your lungs, the shen associated with the lungs is po. And your lungs are associated with the metal element. I have it shown here in this system as gray. Um, traditionally, metal is white, but so is the paper that I have it on. So it's gray. You'll often see it in gray in medical contexts, like invasive medical contexts. This is totally non-invasive. So these Shen govern our emotions and they help to keep our primary organs, our vital organs called viscera and sinew in the literature, they keep them balanced. So the um, Shen, so there is a weaver anyway, the weaver is literally in the web who are these people writing these books um, and what are they researching? I want to know because they have access to stuff I don't, but also just read a bunch of flipping translations. I don't speak Chinese. Look at the goddamn, look, it's right there, right there. Anyway, um, that kid in the bridge, in the center, in the here, in the heart space, the child on the bridge, that's our inner child. And in this chart, the web that has no weaver, all of the Shen are labeled around this heart space. Um, so the Chinese is Chinese. 
in English, it says things like, um, the spirit of the heart is the, you know, the original elixir. Um, it's labeled Oxford Bridge Star, Star Bridge. Um, the spirit of the spirit of the liver is gallbladder. I can't read that because it did not print well. Why am I getting calls on my uh, do not disturb? I am very disturbed. Thank you. Anyway, um, so the poem about the star, the child in the star bridge, remember that's our inner child. This is also the social aspect of the biopsychosocial concept, the biopsychosocial model. We're at the heart right now, hanging out with the kid on the bridge who has a fishing line of coins, but obviously that's also the Big Dipper, which by the way, is reflected in the spine here. So one of the translations of this, one of the read way you can read it is as though your spine is the handle and your head is the dipper. So this is telescope, like cosmic. This is microscope, like what's happening in me. This is our immune system. This is fascia. This is the affective aspect of anything that you hear that has regulation in it, nervous system regulation, and all of wellness, all of Western medicine. So it says, I devote myself to the cultivation of my field. Inside there's a sacred sprout alive since time began. Its flower is yellow gold and its color is familiar. The seed is like a jade pearl. The fruit is always round. Fruition relies upon the earth of the central palace. I need to get back to that. Irrigation from the upper valley spring. One day the work is complete. The great Tao is realized. When that happens, you get to experience something called the golden elixir or alchemical birth. And I have experienced that. Unattended, I don't recommend it. It's actually very dangerous, which is why you will not access that so easily through me. However, I devote myself to the cultivation of my field, boom. Inside there's a sacred sprout that's shown at the base here in the crimson. This is called the, um, I'm sorry, the um, cinnabar field, cinnabar relating to the substance, also relating to the magma of the earth. There are um, primordial yin and yang. They're shown as twins, as fraternal twins, like me and my brother. And they're working a water wheel. So the spring alive since time began. The flower is yellow gold, its color is familiar. That is the golden elixir. The seed is like a jade pearl. If you look at the very top of the bean, there's a little seed above the middle of the, the mountain of the nine peaks that says in a grain of millet an entire lifetime. Oh my goodness me. Fruition relies upon the earth of the central palace. Here we are back at the weaver. So we have three palaces inside of us. We have one in our bellies called the Hara, if you go to martial arts classes or the, um, which palace, we'll just call that the Hara. I can't remember the palace. The central palace here is where the child on the star bridge resides. This again is the social, the biopsychosocial. This is where we can affect change. This is where we can influence things like epigenetics because whatever we are born with is what we are born with. However, our pregnant human is experiencing stress during pregnancy. Anything that turns on adverse childhood experiences, those are all gonna be down 
where that primordial is. So fruition rests here. In some ways, this does assume that the human being has grown enough <laughs> that your head is up and you're like moving and walking, okay? The way that the weaver can conduct though, she is connected, I'm gonna to try to do this correctly on both. She, there's a line, there's a, there's a, there's a thread right from her and then you guys are going to see it this way that is a direct connection to central nervous system parasympathetic all of that okay direct she's the spleen here's your stomach stomach is the cow the ox the do you see how the ox is just kind of like hanging out in space when we're reading this for like boys and girls and sexy fun time, that is the peen. Um, I encourage everybody to join me in the peen intervenes. It's just the nature. It's not good or bad. The weaver has her own peen, but it's an intervention. <laughs> so what this is showing is how we experience dimension, right? Because the central palace is this line. It's the transverse. This is the line in us. This is the plane in us. This is where and how we move. Okay. It's not because of our feet. It's here. I don't know how many humans, you know, who do not have legs. There is still movement. You could not have arms and, and be human. Without a central nervous system and without a spine, that gets very difficult, right? So this central palace, this earth, when you have upset stomachs, all the stuff about you know um, gut biomes, hello, it's all right here. So when you go to a TCM doctor, they're going to be asking, about your background and everything and relating it to current symptoms and what can you do? And I love that. That's partially how I resolved paralysis. And you bet I was getting acupuncture almost weekly when I had cancer. In the world, just like moving in the world, being in the world, we can access this without the needle, without acupuncture, through Nadon. I'm going to just tell you straight up, it is unlikely you will ever meet another human who speaks Nadon and neuroscience at the level I do. And that's out of necessity. So Nadon has been how I have stayed alive as an undiagnosed, unrecognized autistic female <laughs> um, with a, you know, intellect. So this, the Shen, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the Shen here. And then I have to go because oh, I had the phone call with a friend today. Yes. I'm going to say I have five friends now. Actually, let's just talk about the human part. So I call this the bean. And part of what I'm doing with the, the totality of what I'm doing is neuroaffective, affective neuroaffective somatics. I'm just drawing on everything. When we call this the bean, the human bean, it sounds similar to human being. Human being, the bean, the bean, the bean. And now we're attuned to life. The human is being not prepared for dissection, not having to be a whale because polyvagal theory ignores gravity, straight up. Nope, you can be a bean with a dorsal, bound by gravity. This is the essence of the three body problem in physics, which by the way, 
I have solved, you are welcome. It turns out it's the I Ching plotted in space. I didn't realize that until I saw this rendering. Bio, psycho, social. Come take one of my, like, just experience. Just experience some extraordinary yin. Um, and, and, and please give me some attentions so that I can earn the livings so that I can continue to thrive um, because I truly have survived something that is, there's no logical reason. I'm alive right now. There's very no logical reason that I'm sane and peaceful. I must have done it on purpose. I must have used this, right? Somebody else can use something else. I, would, I just want, I want you to know it. I want you to learn it. I want you to have it. And then, oh my gosh, we can diagram thoughts and sentences with this. It's going to be so fun. So you're going to come find me on the tube of you. Yeah. Okay. I'm very happy to be back on the Tic Tac Paddywhack after such a fun time with the yeah, y'all don't know what it's like out there being disabled and having to rely on the internet so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, I want to turn this off gently, smoothly. It's not working. And now. Okay. All right. I'll see you later. <laughs>